listeners and readers of awardswatch.com. This is the Awards Watch podcast. It's episode 162. Time of recording is 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, December 18th. Because We're saying all those times because we're all three in those different time zones. I'm your executive editor, Ryan McQuaid, and I'm joined today by editor-in-chief Eric Anderson. Hello. And I'm joined today also by Dan Bayer. Hi, everybody. We're gonna and we got a busy week this week, boys. A little bit. A little yeah. bit. Things are things are things are starting to happen. A lot mm-hmm. of things have been happening. It's a lot. Been a crazy week. Not even just for this year, but for next year, too. We had two big trailers drop this week. Two of the most anticipated films of the year with Barbie and Oppenheimer. We'll talk about those. We'll talk about those films in a couple of weeks. Uh, when we return, because we're going to take a break next week for the holidays, uh, so everybody can be with their families and enjoy some time off before we hit the ground running into the home stretch of this award season, and then get into Sundance and South by and all these other things that will be happening earlier in the first part of the year. But we are bring on twenty twenty three. It's going to twenty twenty two is say, over, bitches. I, I think some people would want to listen to podcasts to get away from their families. So I don't know. Maybe we should <laughs> one anyway. I, but then that means we have to record one in order. Well, I guess you, maybe you got a point. Eric's going to do a podcast by himself. That might happen. It's his. Uh, <laughs> it's his manifesto that he'll be Eric will just randomly text our little grouping like, "I can't be with my husband and son for one more minute. Who's up for a podcast? <laughs> Who wants to talk about I've this got and that wine thing? and candy? Let's yeah. go. Who wants to talk about Let's the Utah go, Film bitches. Critics winners? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but speaking of big awards this week, we just wanted to briefly talk about. The Golden Globes and the Critics Choice nominations that came out this week, and Hollywood uh, Critics Association, and the Hollywood oh. Critic and the Hollywood Critics Association too. Um, three big, you know, you know, <laughs> three big awards bodies that announced this week, uh, more so uh, than just the regional critics groups. And uh, no surprise, it's kind of continuing the the trend that we've seen and everything everywhere all at once and Banshees of Inisherin. Um, totally dominating. Tar doing very well. RRR having good showings at, at all th- three of them, pretty much. And um, Eric, I'll start with you. You covered all these. You wrote all the pieces on the site and everything. Um, you're doing your predictions for December right now. Um, and finishing up yeah, this week. Um, what did you think of all three of these nominations, in particular, Globes and and Critics Choice? Well, I mean, they're they're never not without uh, some fun surprises and really big snubs, and you know, something like the the Globes are going to be always really really funny, you know, by having Eddie Redmayne in The Good Nurse, which is like okay, sure, it's a very close <laughs> choice, of course, you know, <laughs> but but then on the other side, you know, you get Dolly De Leon, which is not a very globesy choice and is great for her. And it, it's funny when, when we talk about, you know, when, when somebody needs something and when they don't, because it's not all the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody like, like De Leon, you know, needs the the visibility of a, of a globe nomination in a way that other people don't. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, they were not really wildly, crazy i guess no um it felt pretty typical kind of funny that that tom cruise did not get in yeah and we we you know that was gonna fall either one way or the other and whichever way it fell people were gonna be like oh yeah i knew that was happening so in that accent too yeah they all sound like that everybody sounds like that everybody sounds like that when when they get snooty um, uh, you know, and Critics' Choice kind of the same way. When when you have six slots for almost everything, you can cover ten slots for director. And you, that was thing. ridiculous. It's becoming more common. HCA did that too. Um, it's becoming more common, but it's yeah, it's yeah. It's kind of taking like the TV model and sort of adapting into those awards at least a little bit of having multiple nominees and. Than just your standard five, 
you know, for some of those categories. So there's a lot of yeah. movies every single year. I mean, that are eligible. So I get it. And I get the urge of wanting to pick your favorites or pick what you think might win or all those other stuff too, along with uh, some really great surprises and yeah. some nominees that didn't get nominated at golden globe sneaking in there as well. And, and uh, in those groups, but Dan, there were some, there were some big surprises, I think at globes. I mean, obviously a performance that we all kind of thought would get in and it didn't an actress and was, uh, was it Daniel Detweiler, which was kind of shocking. Um, that actually did not, really shock me from the globes like it, it shocked me because it is unquestionably the best performance of the year by probably anyone but it, it i was always sort of like on the edge about whether the globes would actually go for her because more than anything else they like their big stars and behind that they like their young it girls and Daniel Deadweiler, as we've been saying for, you know, most of the season is really neither of those things. She's just becoming a star in her forties. She's having her breakthrough, which is, you know, she's not quite Judy Dench, but like she's, she's closer to that me. than she is to like a Margot Robbie or a Jennifer Lawrence or something like that. Um, so I was, I was not surprised that the Globes did not nominate her, but I was very disappointed. Well, I the think thing, you, yeah. the thing that really surprised me was mm. that they was that she didn't get in, but you know who did? Jeremy Pope for the inspection. Yeah, which is another just really tiny movie that I was not sure. The, would even be on the globes radar mm -hmm. but here he is and like you know what i applaud that because again like that is one of the best lead performances of the year by anybody mm -hmm. and i'm so happy for him that he has that that he can add to his resume now that he's in golden globe nominee and tony award winner jeremy pope Mm -hmm. He wasn't nominated for um, that Ryan Murphy show, was he? He was never nominated for that. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he was. was he, he was at the, oh, at the two, Globes. Yeah. So he's a two-time nominee. Yeah, yeah, him and him and Paul Mescal were nominated the same year, and they were like yeah. the young first timers. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, right. He was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Paul was yeah, nominated. I, I think at the the, Globe, the right? bigger snub story from or the Globes though was was women talking. women talking. Yeah, <laughs> was perceived. But when you look at it, when you step a little bit back and then also take in uh, Deadweiler, this was these were all the yeah, Universal are. Artists films till United, Women United Talking Artists, Bones yeah. and all. Really, 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 really poorly done there, as mm -hmm. opposed to other places, not which have been you know mixed to to good. But sometimes that just is how it is, and. You know, with with the Globes, everything was up in the air about what they were going to look like anyway. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to submit anything, which they did started last year as a safety net so that they could actually nominate things. Mm -hmm. But um, something something I'm still trying to figure out with them is that normally I'll get, you know, flooded that morning with reactions uh, uh, of, of nominations. Uh, and those requests come in like days days before uh, a nomination announcement. I got two that morning. Ooh, yeah, yeah. which is interesting, because um, then it kind of just leads into. I mean, we assume that they're all going to go, but this is a big part of it. Is is <laughs> your announcement going on the Today Show, the call in, right, and being gracious about it, all that? It's part of the whole shebang and and then who were the two eric do we even post them yeah, very I? curious no i did post it because normally you know every year i have this like living yeah it's like updating it throughout yeah, the day right there's yeah like a yeah. hundred different things no i didn't i didn't do it because they just weren't coming in and and i don't remember what they who were they were oh okay nope. <laughs> um didn't know if they were big or anything but anyway um yeah i i and we think did see some in social media we saw some, some people like thank responses. you we, 
we saw mostly from the film accounts on Twitter, not from yeah. like individuals, like the yeah. studios that were more, you know, about yeah. their films. Like we saw, like, I think, I, you know, I, I still saw United Artists. I think, you know, I, I saw um, the Fablemans. I saw mm -hmm. um, everything everywhere. Banshees, mm -hmm. uh, Tar, you know, the, the, like the, the big films, they, they still acknowledged it. It's not like they didn't acknowledge it, but um, yeah, I think the big takeaway, the big kind of headline um of the day uh was the fact that they nominated 10 films none of them were uh, directed by uh, a, a female director of the, of the five directors and best director none of them were females given the last couple of years and and how the globes had really taken a step forward even more than the oscars they nominated two women the last two years right they nominated emerald Fennell and, and chloe Zhao for no man land and then they nominated jane campion and maggie gyllenhaal last year um, and so, and, and it's not like there they was, there was a Regina King before that. So they've, yeah. they've yeah. nominated woman of color before the Oscars have. So I know, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. it, this year was exceptionally like what is going on, yeah. Yeah. but yes. But also too, I mean, it kind of makes sense. The, the, the people that showed up in best director, I mean, these are films that are either very buzzy right now, front runners. Or they're it's something late breaking like uh, that they always they always go for a late breaker, you know they're like a, like a post or um, or in this case Avatar you know the way of the water they just saw it so it's something that's right in their minds right as they're voting um, and I mean if you watch that film you can understand the directorial achievement that is yeah. uh, you can understand Baz Luhrmann and the way that those screenings have been playing out and um, that it was uh, Spielberg obviously uh, McDonough obviously. Uh, and Todd Todd Field, right? No, um, the Daniels. The Daniels. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. He uh, got Field screenplay. Got, he got screenplay. That's correct. Yeah. Um. So I, you understand? I understand all those. I, I. You know, it's they're not. They're part of the ten people that, <laughs> obviously, CCA and HCA nominated, but they're also part of the ten that are fighting for those fights, or, or five of those ten that are fighting for those spots at DGA, and then ultimately at the Oscar. So, um. Is it a is it a shame? Yes. Are or is Gina Prince Bythewood and Sarah Polly out? No. Does it hurt them a little bit? Absolutely, absolutely, it does a little bit. But you also have to take it with a grain of salt because it is the Golden Globes. Um, we have to figure out how much of their power or how much of their influence is is still what it used to be. You know what I mean? This is the first year back from a basically like probation <laughs> where they had the the drunk person on Twitter. Um, it felt like <laughs> tweeting out all their stuff, you know what I mean? It's so really funny though, the it was really, mm -hmm. I, yeah. The the captions, I hope they bring back the captions. Those are great, they, yeah. they made no sense, but they were wonderful. Um, yes. but I, I, yeah, I think we were looking at this year though, obviously not in a really post scandal era, but they have they had more than doubled their membership, yeah. So we wanted to see what 93 people had to say versus 120 because they they had new journalists well didn't they uh, didn't they were rules about where they needed to live plus like 20 more people yeah i mean they they had up the numbers last year but they have upped even it more in the year since is that what oh yeah they're over yeah. 200 now which yeah. for them is huge because they were always like at 90 for 80 years yeah 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 less. so um, but yeah, it was, it was big more, uh, Banshees was the leader, if I'm not mistaken. And the all-time leader, the all-time leader nominations, eight nominations, more than any other film ever. Yeah. That's that building well just crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got both actors and supporting actor, Carrie Condon, um, director, screenplay, um, picture and Colin Farrell. It was, it was a, it was a good week for Barry Kogan because he got that and mm -hmm. critics choice and so he doesn't have to really fight for a spot now the yeah. way that I think like other you know double supporting actor the nods have had to in the past yeah. where like one kind of always gets in and has the bigger role and then the second one is like finds their way in but I mean look at how common it is now it took 25 years for it to happen again and now mm -hmm. it's happened yeah. like Five times in six years. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I mean, yeah, it was a rough week for the women talking 
team, especially in supporting actress. I mean, it, they it, it feels like very much at this moment they have to find one and just start pushing that one actress only because I feel like they have. Is it? I feel like no, it's Foy. I don't think right? so. I, Jesse Buckley keeps showing up at the big ones. Yeah, yeah she seems to be the one who shows up. She's not, but Foy's doing the roundtables. Yeah. So yeah. They were pushing Foy, yeah. But now it seems like the awards are kind of going, leaning towards Buckley. Yeah, I still think that that movie. I don't know how it doesn't get into SAG Ensemble, but and I and I still think it it will. But I mean, outside of that, it could just that could be the movie where it's just SAG Ensemble and no acting nominations to go with it. And um, it could know, be. It could be. So. Um, any Claire, Claire Foy is going to win an Emmy for it, though. So you know, <laughs> it's fair. She's going to win. Well, she's going to win that Emmy for her, that five seconds she's on the new season of The Crown, right? <laughs> I literally texted you when I said I was like, "Oh, well, she's winning guest guess who's winning guest actress in drama again." Uh, and <laughs> anything else you guys want to talk about CCA wise or Golden Globes wise? Anything else? Let's see. I um uh Angela Bassett. Yeah. She's Jeez. showed up both places as well, so she's securing her her yeah. spot. Which <laughs> is an interesting case of someone speaking something into existence. <laughs> also, too, I, I think it's like I said, I think I said this on the show maybe last week, but I told you guys offline. It it feels like that could be in a in a world of uncertainty in that category that might be the place where they could reward that film as well as it or her career and yeah. chadwick one last it, time you know? it really does feel increasingly like that is a chaotic category and if she manages to make it into the oscar nomination that seems like that could very well be her win it would be a very strange yeah win i think for like for her career for the Black Panther sequel to be her Oscar. Yeah. But she's only in it for like the first hour. I know. But like, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, she's good. So I'm not complaining. But like, yeah. very strange, very strange if that ends up happening. It would be extremely strange. But they never win for the performances we want them to win. Stranger for, things right? have happened. And yeah. if the supporting actress winner is the only win for the movie happens. There's the door. It's, yeah, it's, I, it's such a wild category right now. It's crazy. But the other thing that is, I just love more than anything is continuing to see RRR pop up in Best Picture and Best Director lineups. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something that the critics have done and very intentionally done it's yes uh, i i don't think it would have happened had there not been the brouhaha about india not picking it it would have been a little less mm -hmm. uh people would be less empowered to to try and make some statements and there's a lot of statement making happening with rrr right now mm -hmm. and, and critics yeah and i love it <laughs> i um I think that I think that there's going to be there's still plenty of room for even more statements to be made, not just for RRR, but for for other films as well. I mean, you know, speaking about the directors and everything, and I was having a conversation with somebody this past week and somebody was asking me, well, what do you think about Sarah Pauly and director and her chances? And I was like, well, you know, I think I still think she's part of the 10 and everything. But if she doesn't get in to director when it's all said and done. Um, and there's a, a big, you know, brouhaha when it comes to it because of, you know, the headlines that read for the Globes as well as that could read for Oscar. I think it's going to play really well for her in adapted screenplay then at that case. Um, and it could, and the movie could have second legs uh, down the road. So there's, a, there's a ton of, of different things that can happen. I mean, you know, as much as Dan is loving the RRR stuff, I'm loving every single uh, Todd field recognition that he's getting and kind of stacking things up and solidifying himself in like the four spot for pretty much 
uh, original screenplay and kind of leaving it down to just one open spot, it feels like. And he really does seem to be making it into a lot of like doing the double of mm -hmm. director and screenplay, which I, it, it is very interesting because for a while I was worried that that was going to be sort of only screenplay because original sort of has that room, but director is so crowded. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good for yeah. him. Yeah. It's doing well for itself. Uh, it's picking up like a craft win here or craft noms here or there or whatnot. So showing that it's not just like a the movie showing is just not the film or it's just Kate. You know, it's not just and, Kate. Yeah. yeah and, and Although so, she's apparently the only performance in it. So apparently yeah. Nina Haas can't get shit. Where is bullshit. Nina Haas in? Where is Nina Haas? Of this? Indeed. Yeah. And where is Mark Strong's wig? <laughs> I have it now, so yeah. <laughs> that's where it is. Pushing Eric out of, off a podium for Christmas this year. But for oh. real, Nina Haas not showing up at the Globes. It seems like a perfect place for Rude. her to be. And Critics' Choice, even. I like, mean, just yeah. dust. Yeah, yeah. Rude. like rudeness. Not even any of these like critics groups nominating her. Um, mm -hmm. It's been wild. Like mm -hmm. she has gotten a goose egg since Gotham. I, you know, I don't, know. I don't it's, or did she, did she get, did she even get any spirit? Did she get any spirit? I don't remember if she did or not. Any spirit feels like seven years ago. Anyway. Every day feels like seven uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but critics choice, I know everyone wants to say it out loud and it's been screaming it from the rooftops. Stephanie Shu got in at critics choice. So everybody can Woo! come down a little bit. Um, it was, it was good Big for spots. her. Um, and, um, obviously Jamie Lee Curtis got nominated at both globe and Critic yeah, critics choice, which was, you know, um, very... there was a 100% chance of her getting in at the globes though. That was, yeah, that was, that was never yeah. not yeah. happening ever, ever. Yeah, no, for sure. I want her up on the stage with like Arnold to present, um, to like talk about uh, Avatar: The Way of Water. Avatar. That would be Avatar. amazing. Avatar: The Way of Water. True Lies reunion for Avatar: The Way they of Water. They could absolutely present it as you know. Yeah, why not present every yeah. best picture nominee? Why not? I absolutely love that. Or yeah. just have James Cameron go up there and be like, "Look at the shit I made," and just be like, "Here, there's my movie." You know watch it. Have the visual <laughs> effects team enough. present it because really, I mean, yeah, why not? Jeez. Because they work 20 hour days and they were not going to have the time off. Just have a, <laughs> just have a bucket of water presented there. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Golden Globe, CCA, those will be happening in January. We'll have our reactions or predictions coming up soon. So um, so yeah, that'll be that. Now, Eric, mm. you're running the rest of the show. I'm not running the rest of it. We're just going to talk about <laughs> Eric's writing the rest of the show because we're talking about his favorite thing out of the year, which is the oh. Oscar shortlist, right? Is, is is that some kind of joke? It feels like it's a joke. I didn't say a anything. Reach, I just, but it feels like a I joke. I didn't say anything other than you love to talk about the shortlist and your predictions this week have been kind of encapsulating what you might think are going. Yeah. To be I finally those. finished those, the, Took you long to enough. Caught up to, to it. It really, really did. It's. Yeah. I wait too long. I'm like, give me, a, give me all this information before I do anything, and then I'll just <laughs> throw them out there. Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah. So the short lists are coming on December 21st, yep. and it's a lot of really, really fun categories. Uh, original song, mm -hmm. original score, all of the shorts, live action, animated, documentary. Um. Makeup and hairstyling, visual effects, sound, uh, international feature film. Uh, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. And documentary. Uh, oh, so, yeah. And they're all slightly different. Some are 10 spots. Some are 15. Um, so, yeah, I let's let's look at some of them. I don't know. It's um, I don't it. I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm really unsure. <laughs> really unsure. Which one do you want to start with? Which I think we should start with. I think we should start with documentary. Let's start with makeup. Let's start with makeup and hair. Oh, you want to um, do makeup and hair first? Okay. Yeah, let's okay. start with makeup and hair. All right. I think there's some obvious. There's ten spots here. Uh, okay. Things like Elvis and Batman, the whale, uh, are really really likely. 
Um, I also have like Corsage getting in because there isn't a whole lot of representation of that period and those periods do really, mm. really well here. Um, I think there is a spot for something like Blonde to get in regardless of response and reviews, uh, at least to the short list. I, mm-hmm. I, I think it should be able to get in because there are just so many visual shots of the Armas as Marilyn Monroe that are Uncanny. so striking that it's almost scary. Yeah. Like they've superimposed the two on top of each other, like a deep fake. Yeah. Uncanny. Yeah. Uncanny. And as long as it is makeup and not visual effects, then I think it has a, a pretty good chance. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think the woman King should be able to make the the short list here. Mm-hmm. Black Panther. Uh, I'm on the fence with like Emancipation and All Quiet on the Western Front. I went with Emancipation, mm-hmm. uh, but I feel like that movie could also just is equally get completely just ghosted mm-hmm. the whole season by everybody and, and anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dan, how do you see the categories going on? Um, there were two, uh, there are a few movies that you, you didn't mention that I think do stand a chance. Um, the first one that'll get out of the way is Amsterdam because the least said about it, the better, but like, that's some really showy makeup work and very like, it. it's maybe the only good thing in that movie, um, is the makeup work. (laughs) Um, and you know they do like David O. Russell or they have in the past. They like his movies. So that I would not be surprised to see that there. Um, I would hope that everything everywhere all at once manages to make this short list because of all the work on every different version of Stephanie Shu and every different version of Michelle Yeoh that we see for approximately three seconds. Um, I think that absolutely deserves to be in the conversation, but I will... I will die on this hill. Um, X, if that does not make the short list, I will riot. Well, um, get your gear ready. <laughs> yeah. I look. I I don't think it's out of the like. Suspiria managed to make the short list, and they, frankly, they should be more horror movies should make this short list more horror movies should get nominated in this category effects makeup is such a huge part of this industry and it so routinely gets bupkis the category was created because of horror movies yeah and and they have just forgotten that forgotten and you know outside of, of wolfman movies yeah like that's literally it and when it, like the the makeup work in X is insane. You you could never convince me that Mia Goth was acting opposite herself in all those scenes. Like you could not convince me that that old woman was Mia Goth, and yet <laughs> it, it was. She's a star. I, it is. Now tell that, the Swinton of it all. It's <laughs> seriously. I mean, like that is just the most incredible piece of makeup in any movie this year and um hair and makeup branch of the academy you are officially on notice i um i have elvis (laughs) the batman the whale um wakanda forever woman king blonde and everything everywhere all at once i mentioned i do have all quiet on the western front in right now at the moment i Ooh, I, should have kept I, it. I i don't think that emancipation's getting in i think that that's a yeah a rotten apple from apple this year I, I, um i think that babylon is yeah, in we didn't mention babylon. In- yeah i yeah. and um my last spot dan will be very happy about this it's not x uh it's rrr i think that that movie gets in on the short list hmm. um, mm, for interesting Harrison. yeah yeah for ram charan's flowing locks i guess don't think it looks bad of that movie the the best mustache in the history of cinema i mean 
Absolutely. I, I wouldn't be mad at it. I would be a little confused, but I wouldn't be mad at it. The other one that I like hope gets in, um, but it probably won't is the Northman. Yeah, the Northman should get in. The, in, it in a, in should a, get in. In a just world. I mean, my God. The Northman should get in. Um, yeah. White That's, Noise should get in. The, the the only thing I don't like about the short list is that it, it sometimes gives us false hope. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and it can trick us. Uh I, I think of No Time to Die hitting like almost All every of them. single category. Mm-hmm. And everyone was like, oh wow, cool. It could probably get into best picture then. And it got <laughs> like two nominations. It was just like, no, that's not exactly how it works. So it's yeah. you, I, talk about grain of salt. You 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 yeah. whatever happens on Tuesday the 21st. We have to be able to look at it with, okay, all right, that makes sense for here, but it doesn't necessarily mean at the best picture level that that things have changed dramatically. I would love White Noise to get in here um, for just- Greta Gerwig's wig. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Speaking of wigs, Eric's favorite, you can't count out if uh, Sammy Fableman's mom's wig gets in here for the Fableman's. (laughs) Um and uh, bones and all would be a lot of fun if that guy bones yeah, and all would be a lot of fun. You know of what? The Suspiria of it all. You, you know? know what I would really love is if bones and all and the Banshees of Inisherin made it in to Those this eyebrows. category. Those eyebrows. Those fingers, man. Those fingers too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so next category, Eric. What are we? Talking all right, about? that was a long time. We'll we won't talk about everything, and we're not going to do the shorts because that's just not going to happen. <laughs> um all right let's let's look at visual effects because this is pretty easy oh kind of exceptional and it's because variety had reported an unofficial list of the 20 films that would be eligible for the short list which they do this is a a normal thing they do every Mm -hmm. year uh but it's an unverified list i'm not going to say that it's wrong they had 19 of the 20 films and then the 20th ended up being (laughs) Monkey movie? Because they love that no one has heard of. And not like, you know, Del Toro's Pinocchio is not on the list of 20, but this stupid monkey movie is? No, no, ma'am. Not, not, I'm not happy about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, So if we're going by that list of 20, then that's all we have, you know, to make the, the short list of 10. And I mean, anything outside of Avatar, you good luck to you. And that's yes. great. And congratulations on the nomination. Um, otherwise, you know, I like Top Gun and Batman. I'm feeling much more bullish about Doctor Strange than I was. Uh, Black Panther, everything everywhere, RRR. Good night, Oppie should be able to make the short list. We'll see if it can make the final five. Uh, Thor, all quiet. And that's kind of where I am with visual effects, but there's a lot of weird possibilities that could happen here. 13 lives could happen. There's, I wish there, I wish there were more, uh, was there more room for supporting visual effects for yeah. movies like that rather than movies that are like all visual effects? Yeah, I would yeah. agree. Like uh, the Northman again. Yeah. Like the visual effects in that are kind of stunning. And it won't show up here because it's not a visual effects movie, quote unquote. You know, mm. yeah, I I really think that in everything you said, I I hope RRR makes the shortlist and gets into the the final five. I think that'd be great. I think Goodnight Oppie absolutely should like. I <laughs> literally being told after I saw it. No, they didn't like, you know, build a droid and control it. That whole thing is generated by a computer. I, my jaw hit the floor. Um, and I, I do think you're right. I think 13 lives. I think that's going to make a lot of these short lists for on the tech side of stuff. They, I Amazon think- has really been pushing that with the guilds and with these, um, with these artists. And uh, it it is a technically speaking really well done movie, even if it's not a great film overall. But that is 
I would be looking out for 13 lives on a lot of these. Yeah, the, the merging of the visual effects and and the the real stuff in 13 lives is completely unclockable because there's yeah. not a whole lot. So you don't know really what is real and what's not. Yeah. Versus, you know, Avatar where you know all of it is. So you're it's mm -hmm. it's that balance of am I being marveled by, you know, a barrage of visual effects and great computer animated work? Or am I watching something that is melded so well that I can't tell the difference? Mm. I just wish there was more room for those because those are great. That's why I like the yeah. Visual Effects Society has so yes. many different categories and they mm. split, you know, the motion pictures that are visual effects driven and then have the category for supporting. I love that category. Yeah. yeah. Um, Avatar Top Gun the Batman, Doctor Strange, Wakanda Forever are on my list. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, all Quiet on the Western Front. I don't know how that doesn't get in there. I don't, uh, I have RRR in there right now. I don't have Thor and Love and Thunder. Um, I don't either, but you know what I do have, Ryan? Hmm. Nope. Yep. I was just going to say, I got nope in there, baby. Um, uh, going back and, and forth and back and forth. I, I think it's going to get in. I do have Goodnight Oppie, but. You know, part of me also thinks maybe, maybe the Bardo of it all. They love any Ritu's films and and the people that he I, works with. So, but but that movie, Thirteen Lives In, that was a big mistake. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> big mistake, huge, huge. Um, huge. But also too, I know that Eric, you moved it out of your list for your ten, but do not discount dinosaurs. People love di you know the dinosaur effects, mm -hmm. the Jurassic um, World of it all. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. listen. Listen, I'm, not I'm just feeling it. I know. I just well, I don't feel three Marvel films getting in there into the short list. So into the that's short why I only list, have I can, two. In the short list, I can that's see why I have it, two. But not yeah. in the I don't want to have two, but I <laughs> you know, but I have two yeah. in there. Um, but yes, nope should I mean nope's should get in. I mean, my god. That's my that's my like my hope pick there. I mean, obviously I think it could be 13 lives or Nope is great because it sort of is what both, if it's Elvis? both effects driven and supporting visual effects. Yeah. What yeah, Elvis? Elvis would be great. I yeah. would love that. Elvis. Yes. I had to tell you, I rewatched Elvis uh, <laughs> last week and, I, and it bumped up a whole star on the rewatch. Le so. I I love that movie. I will yeah, not complain too. about any ed nominations or wins that thing gets at all. I think it's going to get a lot. His, his movie's integration of production design and visual effects are also of really God. really great because they're yeah. so over the top and fantastical but then at the same time you're like where does one end and the other begin it's a lot yeah. of fun i love that yeah and if you want to hear more about stuff like that you should go to awardswatch.com because eric talked to baz Luhrmann this week yeah. Um, yeah you should do that he was pretty awesome it was pretty awesome and they had like the best blue steel photo of all time oh god <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't ever want to take a selfie ever again, again. unless he's <laughs> directing right. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He was awesome. He, he was amazing. He was, and he was 100% right. Let's go find that light. <laughs> right, let's go to the next category. Let's find that light, baby. Yes. Eric, next category. Let's go to sound since we were on the 13 lives train there. Uh, Minute yeah, ago. that is absolutely getting into sound. The sound work uh, should be able to get it into the 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 ten uh, for the short list, and we have almost like three four weeks before like the motion picture sound editors and the Cinema Audio Society uh, have have their say on uh, those nominations. Um, but I've got Top Gun, Avatar, Elvis, Babylon, Everything Everywhere, Batman, All Quiet, Fablemans, Black Panther, and 13 Lives. I think there's room for others. I but... the, I did not have Black Panther. I have Nope instead. Mm, oh. I think the sound work in that movie is just yeah. incredible. Especially when people are getting <laughs> eaten. By the most I not the biggest fan of that movie, but the sound work is absolutely unimpeachable. It's fair. um I had eight of your uh ten there, Eric. I I, I have um uh Gamma del Toro's Pinocchio getting in to sound. Um I love that. Interesting. And 
talk about a movie that um that when you watch it sound is such a big part of it tar uh is a movie that i would love that i think that that's like i think that that's like because i think that tar's getting into editing at this point and so in order for me to make that prediction, I gotta see. Here's where I'll back to what I said like a minute ago, <laughs> um, <laughs> where there are certain things where if a movie can get into some of these short lists, then you are looking at a but, different road for best picture. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sound is one of them. Yep. Uh, so yeah, Tar getting in here, I think, would be makes an its yeah. prospects uh, above the line much more interesting. Yeah. I also see the Fablemans getting in here. Oh, yeah, me too. I have it because I still have it as a top best picture contender, and there's got to yeah. be a few in here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. Harry Rydstrom. So, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Legend of the Sound Branch and that everything in that opening reel of that movie is just oh, yeah. showcase. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that and the, and the recreations of his uh, mm-hmm. childhood little war movie yeah. Yeah. yes oh god though yes come on exactly. i you know i re-watched this this weekend with my family and i really think the woman king should get in yeah it probably won't but it should mm-hmm. i've been on the fence with woman king in so many categories and it's most yeah. it's mostly that it's competing against other Action or, films with with bigger profiles and yeah. members. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wonder. I wonder, you know, because I have it in a couple categories too. I wonder how big the Batman will play with these, with these uh, short lists too. Because like I watch, I rewatched the film last night. I still like the film a lot, but I but I, I haven't thought, rewatched the... that film, but. The sound of the Batmobile. Oh, I oh, up no, is the best sure. sound effect of the year. I mean, I know. Come on, <laughs> I know. I, you don't have to sell me on that, Dan. I like, <laughs> I, like, had to pause the movie, go to the restroom real quick, so that I can come back and watch, <laughs> get ready for that scene alone. But I, I just, I just wonder about that movie in particular. It's been out. It's, it's, it's been so you know, long. It's yeah. been so long, and obviously, clearly, Warner Brothers is highly pushing Elvis right now. So, and that is clearly their priority. So I see maybe it being vulnerable in a couple spots more than like getting across the board. And um, that like, like we think it could be like visual effects. I could see more, you know, but you know, and maybe another, maybe category. it's this year's no time to die and it's going to hit the yeah. yeah. short list and then be like, eh? and be like nothing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, exactly. Yeah. So, all right, next one. Uh, Let's see. Let's do. Original score. Oh uh, God! Yeah, we got 15 spots here, yep. and this is a category that we have three precursors for already. One of them has already announced their winners, so we have mm-hmm. some we have some fun here. We've got uh, Critics' Choice nominations, Golden Globe nominations, and then the Hollywood Music and Media, which yep. have already done their winners. Uh, and they have genre-based categories as well as a single feature film category. Uh, so I have Fableman's Pinocchio, Women Talking, Banshees, Babylon, Batman, Woman King, She Said, Avatar, Man Called Auto, Black Panther, Nope, Empire of Light, RRR, and Living. And this is a juicy, rich category where there are so many possibilities here, especially for a short list. I am really pulling for Glass Onion in this category. I That's... That score is so much fun. Bah, I, bah, bah. I, it's like a Bond score. I, I, I yeah. love it. I love it. It just gets you so amped. Um, the other one that I, I really like really want to see make this is the whale. I think that the way that that score is structured is kind of brilliant. And I, and I really hope that they, that they go for everything everywhere in this category too. I again, watch that again this weekend and just that score is so varied. It does so many different things throughout that movie. Mm. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, yeah. I I have Fableman's Pinocchio, yeah. Women Talking, 
Banshees, Babylon, Woman King, She Said, Bertel, uh, The Way of Water, A Man Called Otto, only because of the Thomas Newman of it all, um, yeah. Wakanda Forever for Ludwig, um, Michael Abels for Nope, um, I have uh, Reznor and Ross getting in for Empire Light, even though mm-hmm. they should be getting in for Bones and All. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the last two spots was really tough because I had like three films that I really think could get in here. Um, ultimately, I went with uh, White Noise with Danny Elfman's score. I think that that score is really, really good and some of the best work he's done in quite some time. And then I went, um, I went with a little bit of a wild card with it. I went with Dresner and AGI for Bardo because that score is great. I and I think, that. and I think the Batman is going to suffer a little bit because of the fact that what is so heavy and leads that movie is its theme, which is a great theme for the new Batman film. But beyond that, it's the complaint I've heard about the film is that like, it's just that theme sprinkled throughout the film a lot i think that it's not that the case from my opinion but i've heard that from people and i think that that could be the one where we're sitting here on the like where's the batman why isn't the batman on the list and um so i think that that one will be the one that misses come on uh the shortlist morning so no the no the one? only the only movies that have gotten all three so far the globe critics choice and hmma are pinocchio and women talking so, I mean, obviously, those are pretty locked in anyway. Yeah. Uh, and with Avalon the... has Globes and Critics' Choice. Fablemans has Globes and Critics' Choice. Batman has Critics' Choice and HMMA. Mm-hmm. Banshees has Globe and HMMA. I love that score. That score is amazing. What, Banshees? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a good one. That's just a good one. Oh, my God. Either that or Pinocchio should win. Pinocchio score is incredibly that is one of Des Platt's better scores. It's, it's super good. Yeah. Super, super good. And yeah, I want that Bardo score in. I don't, I don't care. I would love that Bardo good. score. The horns in oh, that. The horns. Oh, so, so wonderful. Oh, so I, I was, I, I had to laugh when the Top Gun Maverick score was deemed ineligible. <laughs> there was that and Tar this week. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Tar, Tar did not. Tar made sense. So much, yeah. but the Top Gun score, I was like, yeah yeah that makes sense yeah and you know for the same reason but yeah it yeah i mean it's they basically yeah. repurpose so much of the music from the first one yeah but ah oh, god Nostal- I mean, nostalgia the score what yeah. a score what a score what a, yeah sure. all right should we go to song Eric? yeah we're gonna go right to song which it is always a category that before the season starts makes absolutely no sense. And, you know, you just go with like, who is the biggest stars and let's start there. And now that we have Critics' Choice, Globes and HMMA, it's almost like that. That's almost how it turned out because you've yeah. got four songs that have hit all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Carolina uh, from Where the Crawdads Sing, which is Taylor Swift. Yeah. Chow Papa from Pinocchio, Hold My Hand, Lady Gaga, Lift Me Up, Rihanna. Yeah. I mean, it's it's turning into sort of the Grammys. Uh, yeah, it's very default. Um, the only but it one, never the happens only one, when it gets to the show. It is the only one that has not panned out that way is the Billie Eilish song from Turning Red, which is just a blip now. Yeah, uh, but I, I still have it making the short list though. Yeah. Yeah. Too. Oh, there's no way it's not making yeah. the short list. Um, I kind of feel like the 15 here are pretty clear. You know, it's I think it's mo- mostly, mostly, but mostly. But I read your to... list, Eric, and it's it mine's the same as yours. Like this yeah. was the one where I did not shake. On, <laughs> on I was like, yeah, you're gonna yeah, have cause... Diane Warren. You're gonna have one or two songs from documentaries, and it depends on which ones. You're gonna have the song from uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Has to be there. New body. Uh, Rumba. Anybody um, Rumba? Yeah. yeah. Um RRR will have a song in there, you know. Uh, nah, too. Yeah. That's I mean, that is that is an, an easy I mean, especially for a short list, obviously. I mean, a, yeah. Okay. The, the nomination only, will be different, but the short list, yeah. I mean, yeah. we gotta get I mean, for all that's good in Holly, we gotta get Lyle in there. I, I was so happy. You. 
I mean, I was so happy. I was so happy to see that they, uh, because initially it seemed like they were only pushing that one song, which is not even the most memorable of them. Mm -hmm. But then I saw that finally they saw a sense and Mm -hmm. pushed (laughs) the other song to get like five reprises throughout that that movie so like i think that one definitely stands a chance of of making it um and i also i i will absolutely push for um love is not love from yeah. bros i mean i would Mark love shaman i want that, and nom- that I want it's a good song nominated. i want it nominated and i good. want garth brooks to sing i want it nominated. With him, with him at <laughs> oh the oscars God. like that's what i want those are moments you can't <laughs> I mean, come on, Oscars. Think about it. That's a great moment. It is. It's right there. The crossover uh, moment. You get people yeah. from different demographics to freaking watch the show. It's great. It's right there. Yeah. Uh, all right. What other outside of those other things that I have? Um, I mentioned the Diane Warren song, Tell It Like I mean, a Woman. I mean, come on. Uh, applause. Um, stand up from Till. Yeah. Uh, yep. At the Automat from the Automat to Mel Brooks. Uh, yeah. Yep. I guess. The weekend song from Avatar. Hell Avatar, yeah! I don't know. Hell yeah! Um, it's better than the one from the original Avatar. Well, than, yes, it's better than the Rihanna <laughs> song from like Panther Wakanda yeah. Forever. Yes, it is. These are it some. Is. These are some like flat ballads, though. I mean, I know they are so really like. Ugh. I am so bored. I also mm-hmm. have uh, "You Made It Feel Like Home" from Bones and All. I yeah. have that. all at, at the end for me. Is it is it is it is. God, it's, I want that song in there. It's so good. It's so good. So moody. and the only one I I have that I don't feel comfortable about it, and probably was just a newness factor, was uh, the Fleet Foxes song from Wildcat, the documentary. Mm. Uh, sky oh, yeah i was wondering what, what i was wondering what that was when you had it in your prediction then i looked at it i was like oh so flay fox is okay yeah it's nice. a beautiful song it's a really it and was, i listened to it know, i'm 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 as susceptible as a, a voter sometimes if something is brand new in my in my yeah. head as i'm doing a prediction i'm like okay yeah i'm that's that's in there did you uh, did no. the um rita wilson song um i it's I have it on. I'm the, thinking about it on I'm the other it. list, yeah. and I just watched Man Called Auto like two nights ago. It's a movie. <laughs> it is. It is a movie. It is a it, movie. It's got that a runtime. It's got a cast. Made. It is a real movie. A real. You will see it in theaters. Movie. It's, it's not a movie. Maybe. Movie. <laughs> but it's a movie. Yeah, it's a movie. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, wouldn't it be great if like? Well, I obviously think the the Tanya Tucker song. Is getting into yeah, absolutely that is a that is a yeah. dark horse to get that nomination to. I think yeah. uh, performances. Yeah, talking, I cool. keep yeah. thinking back to what the uh, Randy Carlisle. Let me be me. Mm-hmm. What whoever that was. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that one. I'd be shocked if it doesn't get in. I'm just saying, Brandy Carlisle. She's. I mean, talk about star. Power. Everybody you know, loves everybody her. Everybody loves. Brandy Carlisle, she could probably even win album of the year at this point uh, coming up this year. You know, she's a dark horse contender for that. Yeah, um, I would just say this one thing real quick is that <laughs> I think back to this time a couple of years ago in 2019 when Beautiful Ghost was on, was people were thinking about it. And I'm just saying, if if she can't get nominated for Carolina this year, you know, then it ain't ever gonna happen, even with the you know short movie. So I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there, you know. But that movie is so bad. Not that uh, that matters in I'm this not, category. I mean, but this like, movie. Oh my god. I mean, the, this movie is not very good. Um, and that movie. I mean, that movie is so bad. Yeah. I mean, but Beautiful Ghost actually is not a bad song. It's just it was kind no. of weird that she didn't get it. Makes anything. no sense in the in the film. Oh, but no, no, not a bad song. Not a bad song. So yeah. We'll see how, how that chaotic category plays out. Oh my god! Um, I think we just have documentary feature left. We have international too, and international. Yes. Wow. I so speak the big quiet. the big Kahuna's. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. Look. Sorry to our international listeners out there. Oh my! God. <laughs> you are the worst. <laughs> I have to pull it up. I think I did those early, or did I not do them yet? <gasps> I have haven't not. done. International? I haven't done it. Th- oh, I'm so. <laughs> well, I've done mine. I have my 15. If you'd like to hear them, how about that? I'll have to do them tomorrow with all the 
above the line. Yes, go ahead. Right. My international 15 right now are close. Decision to leave. St. Yeah. Amer, uh, Argentina, 1985. All quiet on the Western Front. Argentina? Bar- Ar- yeah, sorry. Um, Bardo, Corsage, Holy Spider, EO, Klondike, Joyland, The Quiet Girl, The Blue Caftan, Return to Soul, um, uh, and Plan 75. Okay. Yes. That looks very close, if not completely like my list. Yeah. I think that I think return to soul because it's started to do well with some of these critics groups and it could have got a little bit of a bump and people start to see it. Um, Plan 75 is from Japan. Last time I checked, Eric, those were the two that were the outliers from your November um, slots um, because I did my research. Yes. And um, and you didn't. Um, but um, I know how to but, pronounce Argentina. So. That's fair. No, I think I did, but maybe I didn't. Argentina, Nina, yes, um, off the off the World days. Cup win today. Um, and uh, but yeah, it's this. Um, if that's the fifteen, what I just said, that's a pretty good fifteen. Yeah, I I think that's a that's a pretty reasonable. Did you have Joyland on that list? I did yes, have Joyland. Did. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, then we basically have an almost identical yes list. I think. Yeah. I, from my November list, I think I'm not going to change it very much, except for maybe one or two. I might yeah, that's... turn to soul in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, look at my influence. Leave Saint Omer, Argentina, All Quiet, Bardo, Corsage, Holy Spider, Alcaraz, EO, Klondike, Joyland, Quiet Girl. I don't know. Island is not like great, but it has a higher profile than most yep. yeah. mm-hmm. movies do. Um, and then I have Blue Caftan and Happiest Man in the World from November, but Ooh, I Man can see world. I can see some movement there. Some shifting. The other one that I keep like on the fence about is Cairo Conspiracy. New name, Cairo Conspiracy. Yes, mm. newly titled. What was it before? Oh my god. Oh wow. hold wow. on. Wow. There was the uh, boy from heaven. The boy yes. From heaven. Yes. Which I still <laughs> <laughs> Which I have right there from there the yeah. November there list. From yeah. the November yeah. list. From there you go. Um, and I, I hope I'm like hoping against hope that Mars One from Brazil makes a short list, but I, I'm, I don't think it will. This is going to again be an extremely Eurocentric mm. list. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Just but, as, just as long as decision to leave, which I know we'll get in, but as long as it gets yeah. in, that's all that matters to me. Well, and that. that's starting to pick up a little bit of steam. RRR had really like stolen so much critics' thunder. Yeah, and then EO category. winning both and Nefka and Lafka. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, but now decision to leave is is in a good critic spot anyway. Yeah, I needed uh, to. I needed to do more than that, though, Eric. In to. in a category that's extremely yeah, it's open, very, it's very it's open. Yeah. wonderful category. It's very open so because good. if the continued love for RRR continues, it won't matter in this category um, at Globe because Oscar it's it's not eligible at Oscar. So yeah, and so it yeah, yeah. I mean, All Quiet's still there. Bardo's still there. Um, close. I'm actually uh, finally watched that this week. So. Oh my God! It's you know, good. Not to ready to just get destroyed by that movie. Ooh. Um. So and EO's great. EO's great. Yeah. Yeah. But um. Anyway. Donkeys. Year of the donkey. Year of the donkey. Year of the donkey. <laughs> there, there, there's there's going to be some horrible Jimmy Kimmel donkey joke. I swear to God. Or he'll my bring a donkey out to freaking uh Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Where to God? Yeah, he's something bring, like that. He's just gonna bring a donkey right into the show and make it pet. There's gonna be plenty of donkeys own. already in the audience. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, documentary. All right, again, I have to get caught up because oh my god! I, um, this is, but this is also a really fantastic. Uh, I have mine, right. and 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 some you know we already have winners from Critics Choice, uh, mm-hmm. so. But there's a lot of archival docs. There's a lot of non-traditional that this branch is finally starting to turn around on. 
Mm -hmm. um, like finalize in just really the last couple of years. They've been really critical of archival footage documentaries and obviously very critical of anything that is a front runner. Yep. They're, they actively dispose of it at the nomination stage. So you can't vote for it. It's but it's really hard to tell which, yeah, which one, one it's going to be. <laughs> exactly. Um, and it's going to be something high profile because the top contenders here are all very high profile. Uh, yeah. All the beauty and the bloodshed, which I think might be the one that gets mm. snubbed. But I mean, it's going to make the short list. That's for sure. Um, all that breathes, uh, the territory, uh, Navalny, fire of love, descendant, good night, Oppy, retrograde. And then is where it gets very, mm -hmm. um, open. I think for me, bad acts, probably, uh, I have that good there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the return of Tanya Tucker will make this. No, I don't think this, this gets here, but I think it gets on the song list. That's yeah. where it's more. I don't, I don't know if it's if it's at like that level. Yeah, and by not... the same token, Moon Age Dream. Yeah, that's also the one. very experimental with what it's doing. Is perfect I, here. It's so good. I that's the one that I'm really pulling for more than anything. That's yeah, the sacrifice. Honestly. That's one of the two big sacrifices that I have to share. That's not going to even make the short list. Mm, yeah. That would that be one in brutal. That one in senior are the ones that I don't have on my. Yeah, I don't think I don't see senior. Yeah, here because I think because I think the the Netflix one that gets in is uh, Descendant. Yeah, I think so too. I think sure that, that's yeah. reasonable. Um, even though I mean like senior fit like it kind of makes sense like just from the standpoint of like it's robert downey jr and all these people and you would think oh well, that's gonna get in but it's just you know not, they done that before you know where you think something like big profile like that's gonna get in you worry about all the beauty and the bloodshed it kind of reminds me a little bit of like jane a little bit as well too of a front runner that we thought was going to go all the way and then it doesn't get in or even fire of love. Like I'm worried about those two. Like those are two movies where you're just like fire like, of love is so primed mm -hmm. for an absolute snub. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just being like, Oh, but you yeah, think it'll you think make this beautiful list. Movie? Yeah. It, that's easy. It will absolutely make the short list. Yeah. And then like they're like early on, it's been like the love affair with, with Oppie. Uh yeah. early on, you're like, Oh God, my, I feel like that's the one that's Good like the Octopus, populist one you know. that they sort of leave off because I that is the one that I feel like I see the most like what's the big deal about this nice little movie sort of things. Yeah. <laughs> well, Which that... and it's a lovely little movie, but like it's mm -hmm. what it's the most basic. Like yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is it also because so much of the storytelling is visual effects and not yeah. real. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's bending the. Yeah. You know, the, of what a documentary the rules is, yeah. of a documentary for this branch. Yeah. yeah. In a big mm. way, I think but I have retrograde. Yeah. I have mm -hmm. house made splinters. Yes. I, yeah. Young I'm Pluto. pulling through for her last flight home. Mm. Yeah. Bad the axe. Jane, the Janes. Yeah. Um, Janes. Yeah. The Janes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, I think um, also I, Sydney. I was gonna say I think Sydney could get in. Like you know, everyone thinks it's senior, and it's actually Sydney gets in. You know what I mean? So, um, of the like the Hollywood, you know, iconish sort of films. Um, no, it'd be really. I mean, Eric, you said one earlier that I think is like if Bad Axe gets in, I could see as that being like the sneaky little one that gets in on. The final yeah. five, too. Yeah. Kind of like a Hell County it. this morning, this mm -hmm. evening, a couple of years ago. Like, very uh, much so. one of the greatest nominations in this category that's ever been that Harlan County. Absolutely yeah. Yeah. genius, mm -hmm. deserved, and talk about really expanding the vocabulary of documentary feature. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. yeah. That moves a masterpiece. And then, um, obviously, Navalny is obviously is gonna get yeah that's it I is it, i mean it's like it, you know but i also i could see that one that needs to but it's like i could see that one missing yeah I, I was saying like i could that maybe that's the one where they're all like oh yeah eh. eh. so we get it you know what i mean like you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. 
in mid year, it was like this is the front runner, and it's this, not. This not even close. The, 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 the timing and the it, blah, 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 and then it's now like, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. They keep pushing it, so I still think Descendant is is another one where it's like the sneaky winner. Like you know, Descendant, just, my absolute favorite after Moon Age feel, Daydream. Just, that movie is so good. It just feels like, yeah. You know, People actually watch that one. It's it's one yeah. that's lingered for me a lot longer than that and one. all that breathes. That's yeah, all that breathes. Really too. lingers. Yeah, yeah. Those are really good. But also, I I do love all the beauty in the bloodshed. But I mean, mm-hmm. you know, usually every yeah. year my my uh my documentary faves end up missing the list because they're always like the ones that we all love, and then we you know we're sitting here wondering why, and it's just like because they're just a they're just a weird branch of people. You know what I mean? Well, we'll we'll see. They like what they like. If the if the critics' choice winner you know goes back to being the curse uh, after after last year or not? Because, yeah, because it was Summer of Soul. Yeah, Summer of Soul broke the the critics' choice curse. Uh, well, let's just hope whoever wins the Oscar mm-hmm. in this category this year actually gives to and this give year a speech marred without any controversy. Um, yeah. But um, all right, well, those are the short lists. Yeah, all right, Ain't, you know they come out when Eric on the twenty first. Tuesday, December twenty first. So it'll be like, wait, not no. Wednesday. That's Wednesday. Wednesday, no. December twenty first. December twenty right? first. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Today, saying Tuesday, is the eighteenth, and um, <laughs> yeah, so calendar for Eric. Um, okay. Well, uh, you can find those out um on awardswatch.com when they land. I'll be on yeah. Twitter too if it's still around. All right. Well, we are going to. <laughs> We're going to head out. We don't have any listener questions this week, so we'll have listener questions when we come back. But um, Dan Bear, yeah, tell everybody in the world where they can find you and your work, but also tell them what your favorite holiday movie is on the way out too. So, um, Awards Watch recently posted a perfect list of great anti-holiday films thank you matt st Clair. um and that included what is probably my absolute favorite christmas movie of all time the lion in winter okay just i mean yeah. what says christmas more than petty family squabbles i mean come on i mean if you can't perfect. live them if you can't live them in real life at least see him in the movie theater right yeah uh, and that said, uh, like my favorite quote unquote actual Christmas movie, I I can never stop getting enough of the original Miracle of 34th Street. I think that movie is just so freaking sweet. And Maureen O'Hara <laughs> is perfect and <laughs> little Natalie Wood. It's just delightful. Um Okay, but meanwhile, you can find me. (laughs) For now, you can find me on Twitter at Dance and Dan on Film when that inevitably goes up in flames like Oppenheimer. Um, I you can find me at Post and Hive, both at Dance and Dan, and you can also find me at Dance and Dan on Letterboxd to follow all my movie watching journeys. Yes, yes, Eric, where can we find you in your favorite holiday movie? Uh, I'm at awardswatch.com and at awardswatch everywhere except for Twitter. Uh, yeah. And still on Twitter at awards underscore watch. I don't know. We'll see. You know, three weeks ago, we were all talking about the impending imploding doom of Twitter. <laughs> it didn't happen. It was such a Y2K moment. But it is feeling a little more oppenheimer now. So yeah, <laughs> uh, it's feeling a little, a little shaky. Um, like Dan, I wasn't just inspired by Matt's list. <laughs> it's absolutely perfect. But my favorite Christmas movie is X Wide Shut. So <laughs> yeah! it was gonna be regardless <laughs> of that list anyway, because when I think about my family Christmas and holidays, it usually is orgies and you know secret societies so I, I felt seen and i really really uh i love eyes wide shut mm-hmm. i don't i'm not a big traditionalist with christmas movies um but maybe closer to that would be like nightmare before christmas <laughs> 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 but even then oh uh, yeah you know okay um well you can find me on twitter for now um 
maybe i voted uh yes to get rid of elon um so hopefully everybody else did uh today maybe there will be a new change you never know um and he's gonna probably put up another poll after it and be like are you sure dot, dot, dot. He, um, he still owns twitter like, yeah, l- like let's not come on now. if he does install someone else like they're just going to be yeah, but the saudis own him so. yeah, yeah it's, so yeah. like come on let's not pretend um but you can find me there at ryan mcquade 77 as well as on instagram and letterbox and all the places you can't post on Twitter about anymore. Um, <laughs> my link tree, <laughs> and my link tree has been chopped that off. down. Yeah, I have to take that down now. Um, you, um, I, I encourage everyone to go uh, on to the website this week during the holidays um, if you have some time to catch up with some great interviews that we had uh, with Ben Davis for uh, the Bansky's of Sharon that Emmett Sassick did, or Silas Howard uh, interview that Tyler. Doster did or um uh Kevin Larosta the second and DJ Dillard or JD Dillard JD. that uh Nicole that uh Nicole Ackman did, uh Rita Wilson that Shadon Lockie did, um Roger Deakins that Sophia did, and and obviously not just the Baz Lerman interview that Eric did, but he also interviewed uh Trevor Frost and Melissa Lish Leash uh Lesh. Lesh yeah. for Wildcat. Was a great um job. and uh and i still have an interview last week from uh speaking with uh, jonathan majors so there's all a bunch of great interviews um favorite that you can go read over at awardswatch.com as well as reviews and a bunch of other stuff um favorite holiday movie i mean yeah i saw that list um that that matt did matt st Clair. um it was a wonderful list i i saw that goodfellas was on the list uh, reminded me, yeah. it, remind, it reminded me that the godfather should have been i think should have been on the list too because the godfather uh has those memorable christmas scenes where um where um you know where michael has to go to the hospital and everything as well too um i uh, and i thought the green knight being on there was great it's still my number one movie of last year um obviously you gotta watch i think you gotta watch die hard at least once during the holidays um it's a lot of fun um, but if I'm going for a more traditional film, um, <laughs> I, I just recently, uh, rewatched, uh, for the first time in years and I didn't like it at first, but it really got me this week it was Frank Capra's it's a wonderful life. And, um, and I, I was, I was very emotional by the end of it. Um, so I, I completely turned around the corner when it comes to, I've been really turning the corner a lot this year on movies like that and um james cameron so it's been a really weird uh is it that limp that you have so you just I, keep like turning yeah, corners and cause yeah. you just keep walking left it, yeah. it, it, yes thank you <laughs> um but uh but also too like it, you know i'm i'm not a big fan of like a christmas story and and some of the the more popular titles but also yeah. too like watching the original animated how the grinch stole christmas those 30 minutes it's just like that's kind of like chef's kiss it's perfect you know what I mean? that is like one of those instant serotonin hits yeah you like, just watch that the second good. boris karloff's yeah. narration kicks in oh, what a I just every single time every single time yeah it's a lot of good stuff and in movie liked christmas a lot yeah ooh. but the grinch there you go just north of whoville did not well, it's, I'm going to have Dan read uh, this to me. I was just going to say, we're going to do like a table reading. Get <laughs> ready. Yeah. Here we go. This just is get awesome. a cup of cocoa or eggnog, and we're just going to sit here and let Dan read us the book. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's actually weird, too. Uh, one of my one of my uh, my parents' favorite um, films to watch over the holidays, and it was someone who was watching it on the plane when I was coming back from New York, was The Family Stone. Um, and so, oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to mention that. Yeah. <laughs> bad but it's just it's bad but it's like good like you it's, know? Such a, yeah. it's, a, it's a fun dumb yeah it's fun though like, like that or or the holiday which is great uh the holidays masterpiece but yeah, yeah it's way i rather watch the holiday than like love actually which is crap um oh like I, hate, I, I do i love that frankenstein's mm. monster of spare rom-com parts and i will hear <laughs> not a single bad word against it Mm-hmm. I love the description of that damn. So, um, it's what it is. It is what it is. It's not good, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, I, we will be taking, like I said, the week off. We will be back on the first, on the first, on the first of the year. And uh, we will be talking about our favorite movies and performances of 2022 and our most anticipated 
films of 2023. So I'm it's looking for Barbie podcast. Yeah. Let's go Ooh. girls. It's Barbie podcast. Otherwise known as <laughs> let's <Boy>. go party. <laughs> exactly. Uh, otherwise known as 2001, a space. Uh, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so until then, everybody have a happy holidays and we will see you all next time.